Yo, Control Freaks, what's up? In today's video, I'm going to talk about probably the most popular feature of Cliffx Pro, and that is snapshots. I'll show you how it basically works and what you have to pay extra attention to. I'll show you a pretty cool technique how you can morph between two settings seamlessly. So make sure you stay with me till the end. My name is Schlappe, and let's talk about Cliffx Pro. <laughs> Snapshots in CliffX Pro are a very popular feature for a reason. You can store the state of a track, device or even the whole set in a snapshot and then later recall them in many different and smart ways. However, there are some quirks to snapshots, so let's dive right in, shall we? When we work with snapshots, we have to pay attention of what's inside those square brackets. Text in those square brackets is called identifier and that describes exactly what it does. It will identify your snapshot by that name. The data is not stored within the clip. The identifier is more like a label on a drawer in which your data is stored safely in the project. So you can recall it at a later point from pretty much anywhere, as long as you refer correctly to that label. We will have a more detailed look at this later. What do you have to do to take a snapshot? Let's have a look. So I called it snapshot and then all we have to do is to call the snap action. When we trigger this, two things happen. It says in the message bar, snap is successfully created and it will rename the clip to recall. So that means the snapshot is created. Now let's change some settings and we can recall our snapshot from before by simply trigger that X clip. So how can we swap between two settings? That's easily done by taking another snapshot. So let's duplicate this and re rename that to snapshot2, put in snap to call the snap action, change some settings and then we take a snapshot and now we can swap between those two settings. Okay, now let's take this to a more musical example and see what we can do there. Here I have a simple beat with a simple bass line. And actually, I quite like where it, how it sounds right now. Maybe it is a little bit too loud. I open up the filter of the bass a little bit more. Okay, so let's take a snapshot. And I use the um, ranges modifier one to five that will save the state of track one to five as shown in my ranges tutorial. All right, now let's do a second part where we, for example, like dance music classic filter down, now the bass is much louder. Let's filter some of that out, maybe some reverb on it. Yeah, like this, open up, make the notes longer. Okay, uh, maybe pan to the right, just for the sake of it. Now I take a snapshot of that. Okay, and now let's go back. Okay, so, so as you can see, that didn't work as expected. So why is that? By default, the snap action does not store all data of a track. Uh, when we have a look at the manual, it says it stores the volume information, sends, pan information as well as the settings of the first device on the track. If we want to store more or less data, we have to use modifiers, which we'll get to in a second. However, I did some extensive testing today and I found the default snap action. So without any modifiers, wasn't really reliable. Sometimes it snapped the first device or the second device or even the last device. I couldn't put my finger on it what actually um, the snap action was doing. Of course, there is a way to make this really reliable and that is by redefining what you want to store in your snapshot. 
And that is done by the snap action modifiers. We have two sorts. We have modifiers regarding the settings of the mixer. We have modifiers for the devices. Those two can be combined. If you use one of those modifiers, you have to make sure that you also use the other modifiers. That was the way I found, which is reliable. So if you use the modifier dev, also, um, also put behind some sort of mix modify if you want to have the mixing data stored. If you don't, the mixing data won't be stored. All right. So to do this properly, we type in, we're going to rename this clip one, two, five for track snap action. And then we want to store the basic mix data and we want to store all device settings um, or in other words you want to store the settings of all devices okay so this is more or less let's okay that filter a little bit more some reverb okay so this is going to be our second snap let's um, can we do this okay good so this was the other setting and now we bring back this the settings now we bring back the settings we which wasn't stored before Okay, now let's see. As you can see, now all the data is stored. Perfect. This is how you do the snapshot properly by defining exactly what data you want to store. Now this transition is applied instantly. How about applying these over time? We're going to use the ramp modifier and let's say about 40 milliseconds. Or is it? Yeah. And let's have a look how the knobs are magically turned. I'm back. Awesome. So basically that is how you use snapshots. And I'll show you one more thing, how you can use this to take snapshots. Um, we're going to take snapshots with X controls um, as shown before in the X controls tutorial shown up here. And we're going to use this fader to morph between snapshots. So let's do this. All right, so on our controller, um, maybe you remember we've defined those two buttons for the recall action. So let's have a quick look at the xcontrols.txt file. That's the only case where you put the identifier in square brackets into the xcontrol action list. This one button here is going to recall the snapshot S1 and this one is going to recall snapshot S2. So when I press this button, Okay, now the same goes for um, doing the snap. And that means actually you can re-snap because what happens when you use X clips, they will rename itself. You see, okay, I recall snapshot S1. But let's do it a little bit different. Maybe do like, just without the kick. No, I redo the snapshot, okay. Okay, so this is how you could use a uh, recall a setting, maybe without a clap. Okay, let's take the snapshot. Okay, perfect. But as I promised, how can we use this fader to morph between settings? There's a thing 
in CliffX Pro, which is called Macrobot Rax. And it sounds much more complicated than it actually is. So what you do, you put in a media effect rack. You put in the title, the magic, square brackets, and then you define the sort of actions. You can do all sort of um, actions with Macrobat Rex, but we have a look at the snapshots. So um, and let's do here as two. So this will affect recalling the snapshot two, and this is as one. So the moment this rack is activated, it takes a snapshot and then you can morph by to the snapshot S2 by increasing this fader. So all you have to do is to map this uh, button to this fader and then you can Nice. Um, all we do can be recorded. So when we have, for example, this thing going on, I turn on the session record. It now it's it's recording in the arrangement view. Now let's do some. Uh, okay, now let's go to the other part. and then back on. Now, it has recorded everything in the automation data, and that's a nice way you could perform if you take a snapshot of like all of your tracks and all of your devices, and you have like two settings, you can morph between those, and then you can record them and edit the automation data in the arrangement view. I find this a pretty cool way to do this. There is a lot more to say about snapshots, like you can do the ramping, for example. You can do um, stepped when you add an S and then you say four. This will ramp over four beats, right? Let's see where we're staying. But it's like somehow um, it's stepped. So every beat. One important thing, the snapshots are stored within your live set. So it is not possible with this sort of snap action to go in between the sets. There's also another type of snap action. It's called snap legacy action, where the snap data is stored in the clip. Let me sh quickly show you this so legacy snap um, and then track five snap lag so here you have the, the data stored in the clip and here you are uh, able to take this to another to another live set when you change the order of your devices, the snapshot also will break. Now, when I recall data for the device I didn't move, is still going to be fine. But yeah, you have to restore the order in, in order to preserve the, in, the consistency of the snapshot. When you change the order of your tracks, this, uh, however, because the snapshots are stored in reference to the name of the track, but the order of the devices. So, um, yeah, switching the order will break your snapshots, but changing the order of your tracks won't. That's a good thing to know. One more last thing. There's one pretty cool command, which is called snap show. So when we trigger that action, it will generate a MIDI track at the end of your set with X clips for each snapshot you created. That's it for our snapshot tutorial video. 
And I think Cliff is going to take us out. Yeah! That wraps it up for today's video. I hope it will help you on your journey with CliffX Pro. Please like and subscribe, it will help us to grow this channel. If you are interested in more exclusive material, head over to our Patreon. There will be more detailed videos, one-on-one -on -one coaching, Q&As, monthly hangouts with other CliffX Pro users, our user actions, and you will find all links down in the description. Until then, stay, stay well, stay healthy, healthy and, and always stay, stay in, in control. control.